Welcome back everyone. This time we are going over the list view control. We are starting this off with a blank code behind and a very simple grid with two rows, one of height 75 for our buttons and things, and then two columns so it'll be easier for us. It's not going to look great, but it will serve our purposes. So the first thing let's do is actually create our list view. So it's capital list, capital view. And let's put that in the second row. So we'll say grid row one. And then you'll notice it's only taking up one column. So let's add a column span by saying grid.columnspan2. That means it is going to go across two columns from where you put it. And the same thing can happen with a row span. So if you have something in row one or row zero and say row span two, it can also go across multiple rows. So that's pretty useful. Next up, let's give it a name. So we'll go ahead and say list view entry. Now the list view itself is going to have an items collection and an items source. So if you look here, you have access to an items source. But if we go to the code behind, you'll see that if we call list view entries, you can access its items directly. So we could say list view add a, and then we could copy this several times, say a one, two, three, like that. And what it's going to do is add these strings to this list view here. So when we run, you see that these have been added. So now instead of adding them ourselves from the code behind before we run, let's go ahead and add, close this, let's go ahead and add a couple of items here. Let's do a text box. We'll call it name text entry, and we will put it in the first row, first column. Let's go ahead and make the height, say 35, so we can see it a little better. And let's make the font size a little bit bigger so you guys can read it. And then in the next column, let's add a button. We'll say maybe a button add. Let's just make, say, a 50 width, and the content will be add. And we will need to put that in grid.column1. So our button will be over there. And let's give it a click handler. So when we click this add button, what we want to do is add whatever's ever in the text box to the list view. So we'll go to the add handler and we will say LV entries. There it is, dot items dot add. But instead of this A that it populated for us, we're going to do text entry dot text. So if we look a little bit closer, you can see that items is an item collection, which implements the interface iList and works extremely similar to a list. So you have things like dot add, remove, and clear. So when we run this, what's happening is we're actually populating this list view controls internal collection of items. And then the list view is displaying those items for us with a few other features. Okay, now that we can add an item ourselves. Let's say that we don't actually need to populate it up front. And let's go look at a couple of other features. So we have add. And so that we don't have to redo our UI or create another grid or container, let's just horizontally align this button to the left. Let's just add another button in column one, call it button delete. And let's just give this a margin of 60 to the right. So it just puts itself next to it. And let's say del for delete. And let's do the exact same thing again and call this button clear. We'll say content CLR, and then we need another 60 margin over here. And again, this isn't a great way of doing this. It's just so I didn't have to make another grid or use another control that we haven't gone over yet. Now that we have our buttons, we need new handlers, so we don't have to reuse the add handler. So we'll say new event handler and get a delete handler, and do the same thing here, and get a clear handler. So now what we want to do is delete some item and clear all the items. We'll start with clear since it's the easiest. All we have to do is say LV entries dot items dot clear. So now when we run, we put something in our text box and add something else. And then if we hit the clear button, the collection is cleared. So I don't have to keep erasing my text box. After I add something, I'm just going to clear it once the add is complete, make things easy. Okay, so now let's work on delete. Before we can delete from our list view, we need to know what is selected. So if we look at our control.selected, we can see the list of properties available for us. Now, selected value and value path have some nuances that I don't plan on going over today. So I'm going to focus on the first three. 
Now, selected index returns the first index that is selected, which is going to be an integer. So we can say int index equals, and that will give us the selected index. So I don't have to keep adding these things to test them out. I'm actually going to add our test things back. Let's go to items add A, and let's just do A, B, and C. So now if we run, we have A, B, and C. When we click delete, it's going to give us our selected index. So let's put a breakpoint there. Let's select B, which is index one, because it would be zero, one, two, and push delete. And we can see that our index is one. Now I said before, it gives you the first selected index. So here's the first thing you need to be very careful about is if your list view is multi-select, which this one is, and it is by default. So I have A, B, and C selected. If I push delete, my index is only going to be zero because it gives you the first selected index. So if in your application, you need a list view that can only have a single selection at a time, this will work great, but we need to go to our list view and set the selection mode to single. So we'll pick single for now. We'll come back in here. And now that we can only pick one at a time, we will only ever get the selected index. And all we need to do is use the controls items collections remove at method to remove the element at the selected index. So now if we run and we pick B and we press delete, it will delete item at index one. Now we only have zero and one again, index one and then index zero. The next thing we can do is instead of getting an index, we can actually get the object from dot selected item. Now this is type object and not type string, even though we're using strings here because this items collection is generic. So a list view can actually be populated with all kinds of different objects. And that's one of the reasons it makes it so powerful. So for the purposes of this delete function, if we are not using the index, but instead the object, then we're not removing at the index. We are removing the specific object. Now, why you might want to use selected item instead of selected index is because you might need to do something with the object itself. The selected index gives you the index of the GUI control, and that's great for being able to remove it from the GUI control. But if you're doing something in a real application, you may need to remove the item from the database or an internal collection or a number of other things that you would need to know what that item actually is. An easy example in a delete method would be, say we wanted to use a message box to ask the user if they actually want to delete it. So we could say, are you sure? You want to delete, and then we could have some interpolation. Then we could add our item. And since we know our item is going to be a string, I'm just going to cast it. You may need more validation logic if you may or may not have other types, so this won't crash. But then we could say, sure. And then we could give it message box button dot yes, no. So then our result going to be whether or not we delete the item. So if the user selects B, now we're actually getting back this object B, not just one. And we're able to say, are you sure you want to delete B? And if they hit no, it won't delete. And if they hit yes, it will. So that's a very simple example of why you might want to use it. But there are a number of examples of when you might actually want this object. Now let's say you do want a multi-select list view. So we don't want to get the first selected index or item, but instead we want a collection of items that is given to us with the selected items property. And now instead of getting one object, we're going to get an I list of whatever objects are in that collection. So this items here is not going to be asked for specifically here, but instead we could either iterate over all the items and ask, do you want to delete these specific items? Or you might want to say, do you want to delete? And then we could say items.count items. So that way, however many items are selected, it would say, are you sure you want to delete that many items? And then if they said yes, then instead of deleting that specific item, we would need to iterate over each item in items and then we could remove that item 
from the collection. So we would ask about all of the items, and if they wanted to delete them, then we would go through them and delete every single one of them. Before we move on, I wrote this this way because this is the obvious way to do it, but this traps a lot of people. This is more of a C-sharp than a WPF specific thing, but I just want you to see it. So when I run this and we have B selected, so what's happening is when we hit delete, B is our only selected item. So our items is going to be the selected items collection. Now, when we iterate over this collection, and we remove this item, we are changing this collection. Now you cannot change a collection and continue enumerating. So the minute we change it, our for each is going to break when it tries to look at the next one. So when I hit delete and say yes, we get this invalid operation exception because our collection was modified and we cannot continue execution. There are several ways to fix this, but in my opinion, the easiest way is to create an object that you can iterate over while your other collection is being changed. So we could say var items list, and we'll use for this an array list because its constructor can take our i list and copy it into a new array list. So now this items list is what we can use to enumerate because it is not going to change. But then every item that we find in the collection item list will be removed from this items collection, which is going to change. Now we can remove from here without breaking our enumeration. So if we run now and I pick B and push delete and say yes, it will remove it without crashing. Okay, now that we have this working, the last thing we need to do is change our selection mode. So we had it on single, but our other two options are extended and multiple. Now extended is the default, and that's probably what you are used to. In an extended multi-select, what happens is if you click something and then click something else, it will change your selection. But you can get multi-select by holding control and selecting multiple things, or you can click one, hit shift, and then click another, and it will select all between the two. Now selection mode multiple, works a little bit differently in that you don't use shift or control, but instead everything that you click is either selected or deselected. So you have to either select or deselect, no control or shift needed. I always leave mine default extended mode because that's how File Explorer works and a lot of other things as well. So now say we select A and C and press delete. Are you sure you want to delete two items? Yes. And then we are left with B, and if we want to, we can say yes. And now, of course, you could tailor this logic to if one was selected, you could ask it its name, or you could ask each individual item or list all of the items. There are many things that you can do by iterating over this collection and casting your objects to what they actually are. That's as far as I'm going to go for this video, but next time we are going to stick with list view and we're going to talk about using the observable collection to use data bindings with our list view instead of calling the control directly. Thank you for watching everybody. I really appreciate you. Happy coding and as always until next time, take care.